In this tutorial, we're going to see how to create a countdown timer that we can use in Open Broadcast Studio or the Streamlabs equivalent. So as you know, when you're streaming, there isn't an option inside of OBS to add a countdown timer that leads up to your stream starting. But you can either add one through a plugin or you can choose to create your own using simple HTML, JavaScript, and the browser source component in OBS. So we're going to be going with the browser source component option when it comes to our example. And the countdown timer looks exactly like what, I, what we see inside of uh, this particular scene of OBS. So inside of a code editor, let's start creating an HTML file. So you'll see that on my screen, I already have a very basic HTML file. It doesn't have any JavaScript in it. It doesn't have any CSS. It really doesn't do anything as of now. What we want to do is we want to add to this particular body tag. So we want to start by saying script, and that's going to be where we have all of our heavy lifting. So for example, let's start by saying console.log. And I know that this is a very basic example so far, um, but it, we're going to build our way up to an actual functioning countdown timer. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to open up a web browser. So I'm going to say start. My file is called timer.html. Feel free to open up this HTML file however you feel the most comfortable. We're just opening it in our web browser. And you'll notice that all it's doing is printing out testing inside of my console log. I don't have anything on the screen. So let's change that. Let's go back into our code editor. Let's go ahead and add the following. Let's go ahead and add a placeholder. So let's go ahead and add a div tag. So we're going to say div ID equals countdown. And the reason why we're doing this is because if I were to say put a time in HTML on the screen, we're not going to be able to change it unless we use JavaScript. And we're not going to be able to use JavaScript unless we know what component we want to edit on a timer. So this is what this is. It's just a placeholder value and JavaScript will be able to access it through the countdown ID. So let's further modify this. Let's go ahead and add the following. So when it comes to JavaScript, in order to get that countdown effect, we need to constantly be updating. And we can do that using the set interval function that ships with vanilla JavaScript. So we can say set interval. We provide it a function to execute on every interval and how long that interval should be. So in our case, because this is a very simple countdown timer, it's just minutes and seconds, it makes sense to use 1000 milliseconds, which would be one second. Now, if your countdown timer needs milliseconds or something else, you might want to adjust this interval to best meet your needs. But for my needs, 1000 milliseconds is perfectly acceptable. So let's go ahead and move that testing into that sent interval. So I'm going to cut it and I'm going to paste it in here. And I'm going to save it. And I'm going to go back into my web browser. I'm going to refresh. And you'll notice this time around, this testing is increasing every one second based on our set interval. So far, so good. Now we really need to populate that countdown placeholder value. To do that, we're going to be working with dates and times. And if you've ever worked with a date and a time in JavaScript, you'll know that it is not a pleasant experience. Instead, it makes sense to use a helper library such as moment.js or date FNS, uh, which I like to call date functions, to get that job done. Now for this example, we're going to be using moment.js, but feel free to use whatever you feel the most comfortable with. So in my web browser, I already have moment.js loaded on my screen. We need to copy this library into our, pro into our project. Now we could use NPM or one of these other package managers, but that defeats the simplicity of our project. So instead, I'm going to right click moment.min.js and I'm going to say copy link. I'm going to go back into my code and I'm going to create a new script tag right above the one that we had just created. I'm going to say script source equals and I'm going to paste that link in. Now we can actually make use of it. So inside of our second script tag, let's first define the go live time. So I'm going to say constant. I'm going to say source. Actually, I'm going to say constant. I'm going to say go live. And I'm going to say moment. 
And inside of this, I want to define that actual date and time. So I'm going to say 2020. I'm going to say 0524. So that's today's date. Now I'm going to provide it a time. So I'm going to say 8 o'clock a.m. So that's about 30 minutes from now. So we could use this, but we need to be able to tell moment JS how we've formatted our timestamp here. So let's go ahead and add a comma and a format set of parameters. So this can be found inside of the moment JS documentation, but I'm going to say four capital Y's to represent a four digit year, two capital M's to represent a two digit month, two capital D's for a two digit digit day. And then I'm going to use lowercase h to represent a 12 hour uh, two digit hour value. I'm going to use lowercase m, lowercase s, and then I'm going to include an a for am and pm. So this is going to represent our future go live time for our stream. So now what we need to do is we need to actually calculate the difference between the current time value and our future time value. So that way we can actually work with a type uh, with a countdown. And we can do that inside of the set interval. So let's go ahead and say let time left equals go live dot diff. And then we're going to say moment. So moment without any kind of parameters would be the current time and the current date. And the diff command, what it's doing, it's getting the difference in milliseconds. So if I wanted to, I could print it out on the screen. So I'm going to say console.log and I'm going to say time left. Let's go ahead and save it and let's go ahead and go back into our browser and refresh the screen. So you'll notice that every one second it's printing out the time remaining. So let's go ahead and go back. Now what we want to do is we want to actually render it in HTML because our OBS is not going to be looking at the console logs. So what we can actually do is we can say document dot get element by ID, the ID being countdown, which we set on line five. And we can say enter HTML. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say equals moment dot UTC time left and we're going to choose how to format that time. So moment is taking our milliseconds. It's formatting it into, it into a time that it can work with. And then we're going to say format. And we're going to say we want the minutes and we want the seconds. And I'm going to save it. And we're going to go back into our browser. I'm going to refresh. I'm going to zoom in so that way uh, you can actually see the time better. But it says it's about 26, sec 26 minutes until 8 o'clock. Now, I, I do want to point something out inside of our code. So it's important that we use UTC. If we don't use UTC, we may get a correct value for minutes and seconds. But overall, our time and date, it's not going to be correct. Uh, so for example, let me erase it. We're going to save it. And we're going to go back into our browser. And I'm going to refresh. You'll notice that the time, it still looks accurate, but if I change that, if I change that to be hours maybe, let's include uh, hours in 24 hour time, so to capital H. I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna go back to my web browser, and I'm gonna refresh. That's not correct, so let's go ahead and change it so that way it's correct. So let's go ahead and say moment.utc. I'm gonna save it. I'm going to go back into my browser and refresh. Now that looks like a correct time. It has zero hours because it's only 25 minutes until eight o'clock. So you can, you can view other documentation when it comes to moment inside of the moment JS website. We're going to do one more thing though. We're going to add some style information to our actual timer. We can do that inside of the head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say style and I'm going to say countdown. And I'm going to say maybe, let's say the font size is going to be 4 REM. I'm going to say maybe the font weight is going to be bold. And I'm going to say the color, and I don't know hexadecimal colors by, by memory. I'm just going to say green. And I'm going to save it. I'm going to go back into my browser. And I'm going to refresh. You'll notice that it's quite large. That's not actual size. This is actual size. Um, so if I zoom in, though, you can see that it is now green. It's also a different size, 
and it is bold. So you do have the full customization of what you, what you want your timer to look like. Let's go back into OBS. So we have an example to work with. So if I go back into Open Broadcast Studio, and this is just the standard OBS, not Streamlabs, what, I, what we can do is we can choose to add a source component, and what we would want to do is add a browser. Once we have that, we can then choose a local file and then find that HTML file on our file system. We can set a width and a height, and what I like to do is I also like to define a frames per second. So I know this is a countdown timer. I'm not going to be expecting high frames per second, so what we're going to do is we're going to lower that so that way it doesn't eat through our computer resources. But beyond that, that's how I add countdown timers to my stream. So just this very basic uh, JavaScript implementation using Moment.js. And like I said, you could use uh, whatever library makes the most sense to you. You could even use vanilla JavaScript if you're familiar with dates. But for 23 lines of code, this wasn't bad.